Hello and welcome to Blackman's Bay Studios and in our latest mini-sode, another part of our sports career too. Yes, we're going to be talking darts, which is a big part of, certainly a big part of my life, big part anyway, of your life. Mate, yes, definitely. definitely yeah. And uh, we were blessed, I suppose, with the fact that we came from a, a very dark rich area from what, the nine, the mid-60s, yeah. even a little bit before the mid-60s, right the way through to the 80s, really. Yeah. And uh, despite what anybody says, um, the Partridge was still the, certainly the best darts pub anywhere in the Cray, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. And let's not forget, the Crays as a whole, the, the number of really good dart players that they turned out, we're talking about good pub players, uh, and players who went on to play for the Kent side. I mean, a lot of uh, Super League sides when the Super League started. Yeah. And um, Keith, I'm going to say something now that I think oh, needs yeah. to be said is that I firmly believe that Keith is the best art player to come out of the craze. I we we did have some good players like Fred Neville. I'm, I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> Fred Neville was a great player. Sid. Uh, Russell as well but Keith had that bit extra he had it up here he had that focus on the game which is what I don't think Fred and Sid had it was just a, neat, uh, a good night out although they was brilliant dark players but Keith yeah, I still you're, think yeah, you're the best player you know, I'm, I'm not just I'm saying so, that I I'm, do believe no, that no, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to disagree with you mate. but I mean <laughs> modesty forbids doesn't it yeah. hey, modesty forbids but we we I, cert I was certainly fortunate enough to play with some great uh, sides in the Partridge. If you work it out that from the 1964, 63, 64, possibly even before that, the Partridge team, remember back in them days, you only played other pubs that were in your brewery. You know, like you had the Whitbread yeah. League, you had a Courage League, you had the Charitons League. Um, a bit later on, they, they actually did introduce a cross-brewery league called the Elman District, which, which we went in. Um, so you only, only played against the other pubs that were doing the same sort of beer. Now, the Partridge won the Whitbread League uh, from about 1964, certainly around till 1972, I think when we first lost the league. And I think that was to the club. We lost it in one year. But we had some great old players in that team. And, and that side was really, it was, um, what would you say? It's a little bit like the Freemasons, you know. You couldn't get into it, you yeah. know. I mean, the only the only way you could get into that party is seeing somebody died. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's true. You know, they had players, like obviously, Fred Neville, you had Bill Beach was in the side. Yeah. Uh, Alfie Pilcher was in the team. Mm. Um, the uh, the Jones boys, Brian Jones and Ronnie Jones. You had Arthur Reeves yeah. in the side. Yeah. And they sort of really sort of complimented each other. Georgie mm. Dedman was on the periphery of that side, yeah, was, you know. Yeah. And yeah, let's not forget, all these players come from the craze. Yeah. They weren't drafted in from outside. They were all from the area. That's right, that's right. And then um, then the, the team actually started to... Uh, won, all, won all those things in the Whitbread. Then we went in the Elton District League. Um, and the first year in the Elton District League, we finished fifth. And that was because of the new pubs never been there before. But after that, I think there was a, I think it was about six, seven years that we won the, yeah, we won the Elton District League, and our B team was runner up, which is yeah. what you know. I think now that, you know, that B team consisted of players like myself, um, who were the up and young up and coming players of the day, and they, because the Partridge had so many, I mean, I'm thinking of uh, Keith to start off with, myself. Ken Osborne, Roger Elsey, Ray Slater, Barry Wheeler, just to name but a few. There was Keith Wright came in a bit later. Right, Ray Bamwell, Ray, Ray, Ray Bamwell Bam Bam played Bam a little Bam bit, not that much. No, but, no, you know, was, and, then, and then I mean John Salkins later on when he, I mean he lived, he lived, he moved into the Cray and that. Yeah. So 
it was a good quality. There was uh, good quality in depth, wasn't there in that mm. part? Yes. And the thing is, what happened with the team? Because you really, if you remember, Mick, we only used to play a um, thousand and one best of three, eight aside. Yeah. Dark matches never started till nine o'clock at night, and sometimes some of our players in the in the uh, Partridge A team only used to throw nine darts. Yeah. Didn't they? Yeah. You know, we'd end up going one round six or some. You know, yeah. they'd only throw nine darts for the year, for the night, mm. and um, so we ended up. You know, that was a, like I say, a good side. We then went into the realms of playing uh, seven aside or seven legs in, where we played four pairs, two fours, and an eight. And some of the partridge, the old boys in the partridge, couldn't really cut it. They were. No. They were really team game and good, you know, they, they were fantastic at what they did. But it was time to rebuild and uh, what we did is really morphed the A team and the B team together and that yeah. became a really formidable and, side. Another good, another good side yeah. because then, then it went to playing the best of 15 legs yeah. where you'd have uh, eight singles on top of the other seven. So it became far more competitive, didn't it? And yeah. uh, that's where we really did... Um, rise above everybody didn't we I That's mean right. we were virtually unbeatable I mean they, you could have an off night but there's always there were so many good solid pub players in there uh, that you, you could you could always could come through yeah no matter what night of the week you went in there was always guaranteed a good game yeah. you know a good game of darts but the other thing which uh, a lot of people you may not know is that the Partridge now remember this was a genuine pub team this wasn't taking people from all over the area and pulling them into one team. The Partridge won the um, Kent and London Home Counties National Six Aside Championship. We then went on to um, uh, represent London and Home Counties in the National Finals, which we got beat in the semi-final by a team of uh, basically county players out of Lancashire, if you remember. And the team that uh, they beat in the final was a was a Welsh team because we played it at Cardiff, if you remember. Yeah. We went to Cardiff and played that, and the the Welsh team was all full of in, uh, full of internationals. Yeah, you know, and for us to go there and and we should have won that semi final. Yeah. You know, we should have won that, um, but we didn't do that once. We did it twice. Yeah, not bad you know? for a little a pub, not bad a for a little pub side, you yeah. know. So we won that. We went to the London home counties again. Uh, sadly, we lost in the in the final of London home counties, but again, we should have won that one. Yeah. But that was all with local players, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. You know, local players. And I remember you walking in a party years ago, and you got big old Alfie Pilcher standing there, and <laughs> you know, a set of darts in his hand looked fucking ridiculous, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. you know? Looked like needles, little needles, you know, needles, yeah, like yeah. Little needles you know? <laughs> And he was, a, and and he was, a, he was a fantastic player. I mean. Yeah. Um, and a great character yeah, as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, the success we had, let's be fair, and I still haven't seen a better uh, eight aside number one than Freddie Neville. No, Fred Neville was, Funny. he was the perfect man. He was, he was tall. He was, he was 6'2", something like that. Very slim, yeah. a bit like myself. And he had the most fantastic upright stance, didn't he? Yeah. And um, he, he was a great player. He was the sort of player I used to look up to. Sid Russell was very good as well, but Fred had it all, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, you know, we had this big rivalry with the uh, Footscray Club. You've got, which, you've got to have which, a rivalry Which somewhere. was... Uh, <laughs> well, in fact, it wasn't the biggest rivalry we had. The oh. biggest rival we had was with the B team, you know, when we played one another. And... And, you know, and like I say, we, we used to regularly win the league and the B-side would be runners-up. And I think there was one year they all nearly nicked it and uh, we would never have heard the bloody last of it ever that had happened, did we? You know? That's right. <laughs> you know, and I think Mick's mentioned some of the players. I mean, you know, probably old Bert Archer, you probably used to uh, 
dabbling a bit of darts here, didn't he? Yeah, he played in there too. He was <laughs> clearly the oldest person who'd sign and it fascinated me how he ever threw a dart because he had half his hand missing with yeah. all the fingers and that. Yeah. But he was, a, he was a lovely old boy, wasn't he? He, he was, he was yeah. in the team on merit. He was a he was a good player and he, he was a likeable bloke, wasn't he? He was, yeah. Yeah. You know, Keith Wright, and Keith was always a nervous boy, wasn't he? Yeah, Keith moved into the area, moved into uh, Lallinston and uh, he started coming to the pub and he, he, started, he, he started getting a good... Good solid player, didn't yeah, he? Was he, it, he, yeah, he, he, he deserved himself, to play right? in the side. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, there was other people. I mean, Chris Whelan for a little while, didn't he? I mean, I don't know if anyone knows Chris Whelan. He, he used to live in um, Ockham, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. And uh, he he came in the side, but then he formed his own team, which became the the B team, and he he formed a team with all the new up and coming youngsters. Uh, Dave Vincent springs to mind. He yeah. was 17 at the time, I think. Who was a very good. Uh, he went on to play county darts. So, yeah, that, that, and that's how it refreshed itself, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, I I, I think that the our, our best team overall, and I've got a picture of the side there. <clears throat> we actually got them on the opening graphics here. The overall side that uh, I really enjoyed playing in was certainly that team there where you got. Uh, um, sadly, um, uh, Barry's not in that Barry Wheeler, but mm. uh, but he was uh, Barry was a a fantastic player for the club. But we got Slater and Roger Elsie, like you say, Johnny Reese, Mister Darts, yeah. isn't it, John? I mean, Ken Osborne. Yeah, remember, Kenny, no, let's yeah, not forget Kenny. Kenny Osborne, and yeah. Uh, yeah. So there was there was some great uh, great. Fantastic nights, isn't it? Yeah, it was. Right. It was a great night out. It was a it was a good sociable and let's not forget it was a fairly cheap night out, wasn't it? It was, yeah. A pint yeah. of beer would cost what? Half a crown for mm. brown and mild. You could eight, get eight pints for a pound, couldn't you? Yeah. Well I remember when we was playing, if you hit a town away from home, yeah. you'd get a pint. Yeah. You know, you you'd oh, we was over the black boy over at um uh, Abbey Wood there over that way and um, and I had six I was actually playing number one that night because I think Fred had a year off so I was playing number one and I had six hundreds on that night and uh, went up the bar and the boat said oh we've got to give you six pints and Sidney Russell came up behind me and said there's six brown and miles <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. six brown and miles yeah. <laughs> so they could sap it couldn't they yeah so Moving on, what happened to all these players? Well, the the governor of the Partridge was a bloke named Fred Payne, who was a real old school publican, wasn't wasn't he? Put fantastic food well, on. Yeah, and he had to he had to retire, and uh, someone came in who didn't last long, and they got another bloke in named Dave Lyde. Do you remember Dave? Now he loved darts, so he was ideal for the pub. But the brewery had other other ideas of uh, renovating the partridge. So what did they do? They moved the dartboard, they put in a pool table, yeah. and then spruced it up. And of course now Dave Lye was fish out of water, wasn't he? He it wasn't the image that they were looking for. So yeah, yeah. so they they got rid of Dave and put some young bloke in there who used to let anybody go in there drinking at any age. I even heard a um, blokes from midfield school going in there for lunchtime having a pint with their blazers on yeah <laughs> and uh, nothing causes more trouble in a pub than a pool table so you had that young drinkers and it got a bad reputation as a trouble pub which mm. is a shame and now it's gone yeah so, but I mean you know I, a lot of the players obviously they dispersed and played for other teams I mean even when I was playing for the Partridge uh, we played the odd game for the club, didn't we? In various things. Yeah. Um, I played for the Duchess of Kent uh, over in Erith, which was a fabulous, fabulous team. I've got a picture there. Mm. You went down to play down the Alma. Yeah, down the Alma, which had a great team, uh, and we was very, very successful. I also played in the club. We had a very successful uh, team in on the Wednesday league there. So you, I mean, a lot of players went on to. Other things like uh, Super League, you went, you played county darts, didn't mm, you? So, yeah. so Keith really was a very good and, and was well worth his place in the in the county A team. You did well, Keith. Yes, it's. Uh, I mean, I didn't have a 
an overly long career because I ended up, you know, as you know, when I went out to the Middle East and when I came back, I didn't have that drive anymore, you know. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, but I, I, lo I loved it when, when, when it, you know, while it lasted. Yeah. And uh, it was great. And even, uh, like I say, being on Facebook to meet up with some of the old, uh, you know, some of the old county mates and... Yeah. Uh, you know, in internationals that we used to sort of knock about with, so it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I, I bought my darts, because when uh, the Tungsten darts came out, I bought a second-hand set off of Chick Love. He was a Kent County player. I think he charged me a tenner for them. Uh, it's, it's a lot of money then, wasn't it, for a well, set of darts, yeah. second-hand. Yeah. And, I, and I only ever used them darts from that day forward. Right until I came to Australia, I used those darts and they stood me well. I could confidently say I've got the oldest set of tungsten darts in Australia. <laughs> so I bought some off of Willie Everton when they first came out many, many yeah. years ago. And, uh, you know, so, and they cost me a bloody arm and a leg and all com yeah. comparatively, you know, back yeah. in them days. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but I mean, there was, um, we'd, we'd, obviously you, while we've been talking, you'd be some, there was pictures obviously flashed up and things like that so uh so you know hopefully you'll see some someone you know recognize the old faces you know, and if we've yeah. dropped any names yes if we've forgotten you know. very sorry we've, we've tried to think of everybody i think everybody especially off the craze have, have got a mention anyway i think we have so I yeah hope so. i mean I, I you know there there were other pubs on the cray i mean there were some other good little teams on the cray nothing yeah. in our class called <laughs> Um, no. You know, pubs like the Beach Tree. I, yeah. I think they started off. Beach Tree boys started off down the Bridge House, though. I think. Yeah, that's right. The old um, chums, wasn't it? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and then Dougie they toes that's it. Then yeah. they moved up to the up to the Beach Tree, and then the Five Bells didn't have a bad little side for a while. That's right. Yeah. Um, but like I say, it was uh, the centre of darts in the cray. Definitely the partridge. Just partridge. Yeah. yeah. You know. And uh, pleasure let's, to play. Let's not forget, Keith. Um, we've been to. If, the only names we've mentioned are the blokes, but women played darts oh, yeah. as well. And they, and Sandy, well, Sandy played in a dart team. She she was the captain. She she was pretty, well, okay, not bad dart player. And we've got a picture of him here, uh, Keith. And uh, do you remember that picture was uh, taken at, at, down at Coombe Haven? Coombe Haven, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah it was that. a good good uh, dart week that was. Yeah. Uh, Pete, if you don't recognise Sandy, she's the one, the second from the left. She's, she, it was the days when she had blonde hair, so that's why you might not recognise her. So, yeah. But they, they were good in their own right. And, and they was off the cray, weren't they? Yeah, and uh, there was yeah. a lot of other female teams that played in and around the craze from the putts. Yeah. All, all very good, solid players. Not in the early days. They, weren't, they didn't have women's leagues, you know, when we first started playing, I did. Yeah, but it caught on very quickly. late innovation. Yeah, but it caught on very quickly and it was very well um, received yeah. by the women, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. So, Keith, there it is in a nutshell. Yes, another little mini so <laughs> wrapped up, uh, giving our secrets away from our youth. Yeah. Hey? Hope you've enjoyed it, our little trip down memory lane of the Partridge and its dark teams. Yep. And I uh, hope you recognise some of the names we've uh, yeah. we've been splurging out there. Yeah. So uh, thanks very much, and uh, hopefully we'll see you on our next mini show. Yes, thanks for watching, and bye bye. Ta -da. This has been a Blackman's Bay Studio production.